And hello, one and all, and welcome to my review for Lucha Underground, Season 2, Episode 2. Uh, this was a really, really good show. Once again, another strong effort from the Lucha Underground brand. Enjoyed this episode from start to finish, and I was just thinking to myself while I was watching it, man, does this show go so fast. I mean, I'm looking at the clock, and it's like, it was one hour. And I realized that is the perfect amount of time for a wrestling show. Lucha Underground's an hour, NXT's an hour, and boy, what a difference does one hour make. It. So, uh, yeah, this show from start to finish, while I didn't think was as strong as last week's episode, I thought was still a very good show. And there was a lot coming out of it, and uh, that ending really got me excited for next week's episode of Lucha Underground. So let's get into my overall thoughts on what took place on tonight's episode. Uh, we kicked things off with uh, Prince Puma and Pentagon Jr. They were backstage, and uh, pretty much uh, Pentagon tells Puma that tonight uh, they will be tag team partners. They will team up in the main event to take on uh, three members of the Disciples of Death. And Puma says uh, that... Once they finish off them, that Pentagon Jr., he's coming after him. And uh, then they started to just do this really sick brawl back in the locker room. And it looked like, you know, he, um, I believe it was Puma kicked Pentagon in the face. And it was just the way it was shot and edited. It was really well done, very, you know, very violent. Um, but they had to coexist later on in the night. So definitely like how they set this uh, segment up. Highlighting the tension that already previously existed between uh, both individuals. And you, it led you to wonder, how will they coexist going into this match against the Disciples of Death? So it's set up for what would be a pretty fun uh, main event match. And then our first match of the e evening excuse me, was Johnny Mundo versus uh, Killshot. I uh, don't know a lot about Killshot, like I said. Still understanding Lucha Underground. This is only the second episode that I've watched. But um, slowly over time, I'll begin to develop uh, you know, the knowledge about the wrestlers and the storylines that are going on. But uh, this was a good opening contest. As we all know, uh, John Morrison now goes by the name of Johnny Mundo. I was always a big fan of Morrison. Always felt like he had the potential to succeed in WWE. And I'm glad to see that he went somewhere else and is getting the opportunity to succeed. Um, I thought Morrison, or Mundo, excuse me. Um, you know, him and uh, Killshot had a pretty good match. Uh, Morrison was able to get control of the match uh, midway through. Um, you know, there was a lot of, like I said, high flying action going on, um, and Mundo was able to get the victory uh, after uh, Mundo was able to get the uh, end of uh, the world. His finisher hit it on Killshot. He tried to go for a first time, but Killshot was able to uh, scout that. But then Morrison was able to set him up and hit it for the second time. Picked up the three count. Then after the match, uh, Brian Cage um, appears in the crowd. Um, and mind you, the whole time before this, before Cage uh, appears, uh, Mundo goes and directs his attention to Will Martes. Because as you all know, Martes, the Lucha Underground champion, he is you know, sitting on this big throne watching over all of the matches in the temple. And Morrison, or Mundo, sorry, Freudian slip, uh, pretty much tells him that he's going to be the one that wants to uh, take that title from Muertes. But then, this is when Ryan Cage comes out, and he says pretty much, uh, no, you're, you're not going to worry about you know taking the title. You're going to have to worry about me kicking your ass. And then it looks like uh, they're going to, you know, Cage gets in the ring with uh, Mundo, and it looks like they're going to go at it, but then... Uh, Mundo decides to get the hell out of there. So it looks like they're setting up a future match between uh, Brian Cage and uh, Mundo. And then Mundo tries to go for a sneak attack on Cage. But then Cage is able to uh, hit a big shoulder tackle on the Mundo. And uh, Cage attempts to go for the press slam. And that's when Mundo makes his escape. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, a future match between Johnny Mundo and Cage. Uh, should be a good match. Uh, after this, uh, we had a backstage segment uh, with Sexy Star and uh, Marty the Moth. Uh, pretty much, uh, 
you know, Sexy Star is being held down by uh, Martinez and pretty much says that there's nothing to worry about and what I'm doing is just to help you. And uh, Marty says that it's time for Sexy Star to pretty much spread her wings and to fly back to the temple. And Marty says that he will be joining her. So, like I said, don't know a lot about these storylines, but it was a well-shot uh, vignette, a, a backstage promo, and I'm interested to see uh, where they go. Oh. So, now, a, a, a part of the show that I really, really enjoyed, as we all know, Justin Gabriel, now known as PJ Black. They cut this really... I really enjoyed this, backstage, uh, this vignette. This was just a really... Really awesome video package. Um, pretty much, Black says uh, that he's not looking for money or recognition. He's looking for the next thrill. And he says that Lucha Underground is the place to be. It shows him going around, kicking all these guys' asses. And, you know, they do slow-mo. It's just it's really well shot and done. And got me very hyped to see uh, PJ Black. And I was always a fan of Justin Gabriel. I always felt like he had some potential in WWE. They never really gave him much or if any of an opportunity besides the Nexus angle after that it seemed like it was all downhill for the guy. I definitely think he will be a much better fit in Lucha Underground with the high flying uh, Lucha Libre style and um, he would make his debut uh, later on uh, in the show. He would face uh, the Mac and uh, they actually had a pretty good match. Uh, you know, uh, went back and forth and surprisingly Surprisingly, uh, Mac was able to counter and hit a stunner uh, to, to hit the pickup victory. I thought for sure that um, Black was going to hit his patented 450 splash, uh, but Mac was able to counter <laughs> out of that. Excuse me. And when Black tried to go for the springboard crossbody, that's when Mac was able to hit uh, the stunner on him for the victory. So despite losing, I thought the match was really well paced, really well done, and uh, it highlighted the uh, the offense of Black well enough that despite losing, he still looked strong in defeat. So it was done in a way that I thought made sense. So I'm excited to see where they go with him. I really like his new his character. He's just there. He's ready to fight. He doesn't give a crap. You know, he's ready to make a name and impact on Lucha Underground. And I definitely see good things ahead for PJ Black. And hopefully the opportunities exist. Uh, I'm pretty sure they will in Lucha Underground. So glad to have him uh, as a part of the Lucha Underground roster. So good match between him and uh, the Mac. And then we had uh, another vignette. It was for the newest female luchador. Uh, she will be debuting. Her name is Cobra Moon. So interesting to see uh, what she has to offer when she debuts in Lucha Underground. And then finally, we had our main event contest of the evening. It was Prince Puma and uh, Pentagon Jr. teaming up to take on the Disciples of Death with Katarina at ringside. Um, this was a good match, a good way to close the show. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how that tension would play off of Prince Puma and Pentagon Jr. Uh, early on in the match, they were able to clear, lay out the uh, Disciples of Death with uh, Puma and Pentagon flying over the top rope. Uh, eventually, uh, you know, Pentagon, or Puma, excuse me, later on in the match, uh, he would take a severe, tremendous amount of punishment, and, uh, you know, you were hoping eventually that he was going to be able to make the tag in to uh, Pentagon Jr. Uh, eventually, towards the end of the match, uh, Puma goes up for his 630 splash, but uh, Pentagon, or excuse me, Puma goes up for the 6:30 splash. Pentagon makes the tag. Puma doesn't see it. He hits the splash, and then Pentagon, as the legal man, picks up the victory. So, despite defeating the Disciples of Death, uh, there was still that controversy, controversy and tension that existed between Puma and Pentagon. And I liked how they highlighted that. Uh, it was well done. And then, of course, yeah, they began to brawl amongst one another, and then it looked like Pentagon was going to break the arm of Prince Puma, but Puma was able to get out of that uh, predicament. So, fun main event, a good way to close out Lucha Underground Episode 2. And then, at the end of the show, we have this awesome hook for uh, next week's episode, and future episodes. 
Uh, it reveals that Rey Mysterio, the, that's right, you heard me, Rey Mysterio is going to be in Lucha Underground. We all knew it was coming. We were wondering when Rey was going to make his debut in Lucha Underground. So I was excited to see that promo. Definitely got me hyped for next week and future uh, episodes of Lucha Underground. Can't wait to see Rey make his debut on Lucha Underground. And I'm interested to see uh, what his... You know, what he, he will be able to accomplish in Lucha Underground. I think we were able to be accomplished a lot. As we all know, Rey Mysterio, one of the greatest uh, luchadors, high flyers of all time. Um, it's been a while since, you know, I've seen him because <clears throat> I know he went to wrestle down, I believe, in AAA after he less, left WWE uh, in 2014. So I'm excited to see Rey again. And, you know, I've, I've always been a big Rey Mysterio fan. And, uh... Can't wait to see what he does in Lucha Underground. Big addition, huge addition. So, yeah. So, all good things out of the show. I, I don't think there was one uh, thing I didn't enjoy on the show. So, from start to finish, another enjoyable episode of Lucha Underground. Like I said, I'm learning each week that I watch. So, hopefully these reviews will get better in time. I apologize if I didn't get all the details quite there. But uh, I'm glad I'm a fan of Lucha Underground. Uh, I would give this show a solid A. This was an A show from top to bottom, so another good episode of Lucha Underground that I enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments section what you all thought of Lucha Underground. What did you like? What did you not like? Always like to hear that discussion. Thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please click that like and subscribe button for more video content coming to this channel. And I will see you for my NXT review later on tonight. Hope to have that uploaded. So, till then, peace.